So you have probably already came across one of these feature sections on websites where basically on the right side we have an image which is sticking to the center of the viewport as we scroll down the page and on the other side we have a bunch of these text layers, a bunch of these features that are basically scrolling away uh, as we scroll down on the page. And as we switch between these features, the images on the right are changing. And this is a really well-known pattern used by different websites. So for example, this is the Apple Watch Series 9 website recreated in Framer. You see that they basically use kind of the same uh, in the structure here, the same pattern. They just have these two sections right below each other. So we have the text on top and then the sticky image on the bottom. But basically it is kind of the same structure here. We have the tinypod.com which is basically a new product. It is also built in Framer and is using the same pattern for this feature section. So how can you build something like this in Framer? How can you set up your project and create this without writing a single line of code? Well, this is what I'm going to teach you in this video. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University and let's get started. So as you can see, here we are in Framer and we just have a really basic uh, project setup right here. We have a bunch of these images that we will need uh, in this tutorial. I already have all of them in this project. And then we have this main stack here within this desktop breakpoint, which is a stack set to vertical direction, distribute set to start with zero gap and with 2000 pixel height. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, the remix will be in the description. You can just click that and copy this project to your account. And then if you go to pages right here and then go to slash starter, you're going to find this page here. And basically you're going to see the exact same thing that I'm saying right now. And so you can start building with me because you know, practice is basically the way you can learn the most, not just by watching. So I highly encourage you to follow along with me. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just place a little um, hero frame here. As you can see, we have just a placeholder, like a spacer section at the top. So I'm going to just draw it right here. I'm pressing F on my keyboard to draw this frame here. I'm going to set the width to fill so it always fills up the available space. And then the viewport height will be around 40 VH. Great. I can also remove the fill color because that's something that we don't need. And then the frame will be renamed to hero section. So now below the hero, we can have the actual section that will contain all of these nice uh, text layers and images. So this will be a you know section. So section one will be the name of this frame. And then the fill width will be applied here as well. Maybe we're going to set 1500 for the width and we're going to remove the fair color again. So this section one will also be a stack. So I'm going to apply this layout here because it makes it so much easier to create these responsive layouts in Framer if we use stacks. So now we have this. So we can start adding a bunch of these text layers and elements that we need within this website here onto this section one. So let's just take a look at this uh, little feature section here and think about what elements we will need um, in order to create this. So we have two main elements. We have the text layers and we have the image on the right. As you can see, we have a bunch of these text layers and they are basically the same. So when we see something like this on the framework website, we should probably think that, okay, we probably can make this into a component because then we can reuse it multiple times on our website and it will speed up our workflow by a lot. So I'm going to create a component for this text layer and it will have two variants. One variant will be this little gray uh, colored text and then the other will be this white colored text. So let's create that really quickly. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and press down on this section one. And I start typing something here uh, just so I can see the text here. And I'm going to change the color to white. 
and then I'm going to apply this H2 style right here. You're going to find this style in the project if you remixed it. I'm going to just show you what this H2 style is. It is basically an interfont with semi bold weight. And the really great thing about uh, text styles in Framer is that they have these breakpoints right here. So as you can see, we have L, M, and S. L, M, N are basically desktop and tablet, and S is the mobile variant or the mobile you know, breakpoint of the, uh, of the text style. So basically, we don't have any change on uh, L and M, so desktop and tablet. However, we change the font size to a smaller size on mobile. So it will automatically you know, adapt to a mobile view. It will just make the text smaller. So this is also really handy uh, to use in Framer. So now what I can do is I can just um, copy this right here. So I will just copy this text and now we have our first feature. So in order to turn this into a component, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, wrap this in a stack. So I'm going to hit Option, Command and Enter on my keyboard. This wraps it in a stack and then I can call this text component. Once we have this, I'm going to select the text layer within and then set its width to fill. Now we are ready to turn this into a component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the text component frame and then hit Option Command K on my keyboard and then hit Create. And we have a component created. And now we are within a component canvas where we can create those two variants that I was talking about previously, the gray one and the white one. So let's do that. We already have the white one here, so I'm going to just rename this variant to on. And then I'm going to create another variant, which will be called off. And then this will be uh, mm -mm -mm, a different color. Uh, we're going to use this 10 right here, which is a little gray color. So now we have this component. It's really nice. We can duplicate this a bunch of times and we can reuse this uh, within our website and it will make our life a lot easier. Uh, however, as you can see, we have a small issue right here. How can I change the text layers here um, on these different components? How can I write different texts on each of them? Well, if I try to, let's say, go into this second component, you'll see that I can you know, maybe write something here, but every single component instance will be changed. And you might think that uh, like this is not great, like components are not good. But no, this is exactly the point of components, because just think about it. You change your mind, you want to have a different color, let's say on the on variant, and then you change it to blue. As you can see, on all component instances, it will be applied. You don't have to change it each and every time. That's really great. However, when you want to have a certain variable or a certain aspect of the component that you want to you know, fine tune and adjust on different instances, you want to create a component variable for that. So in our case, the text content is something like that. So I can just go within the component, select the text layer, go to the right panel, and then we're going to have this content here. As you can see, we have this little plus button next to it. That means that we can connect a component variable to it. So I'm going to create a variable plain text. And then as you can see, we created a text component variable. So now if we go back to the canvas and select one of these component instances, we're not only going to see the variant switch where we can select the off or on variants, but we're going to only see this text property where we can write anything to change each of these text layers individually. So this is exactly what we were looking for. So I'm going to select all of these, set those variants to off, and then I'm just going to paste in the appropriate text layers or the text content to each of these features. So now we have all of these text layers here, all of these component instances, and we can basically structure this correctly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at this here. So here we have probably two columns. On the left, we have the text layers wrapped in a column. And then on the right, we have the image wrapped in another column. So now we should just wrap all of these text components into a 
column. So I'm going to hit Option, Command, and Enter on my keyboard. This will be the text column. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to fill width. And then I'm going to set the gap to 120. So we have a bit more space between these. And then basically that's all I have to do here on this text column. Before I add another column next to this for the image, I want to show you something really, really interesting. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that the bottom part of this G is missing. So why is this happening? As you can see, it's just a small detail, but we have to fix this. So I'm going to go into this component and you can see that we have wrapped this text layer within a frame. Uh, we have this on variant here. And if we go to the right panel and see the overflow property here, you can see that it is set to overflow hidden. So basically, if we have, for example, this Y letter here, which is overflowing its um, parent frame, which is this on variant, it will be hidden because the overflow is set to hidden. So if I change this overflow to visible, as you can see, the bottom part of this Y will be finally visible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another column next to the text column. So I'll just draw another one here. And then what I notice is that this new column, the illustration column, let's just rename it illustration column. It is not next to the text column, but it's right below it. And so why is this happening? Well, it's because the section one is a stack and then the direction of this stack is set to vertical. Everything is right below each other. If I change the direction to horizontal, you'll see that now these two columns are right next to each other, which is exactly what we want. As I'm here at the section one, I can also adjust the gap here to a little bit bigger size, maybe 100, just to make sure that we have a little bit more space between these two columns. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this illustration column is a little bit bigger. We're gonna remove the fill color because that's something that we don't need. And then I'm gonna turn it into layout again because we use this for this responsive layout. So now we have the illustration column here. Uh, what we need now is the content of this column, which is these images, which are changing as you can see. So if I think about it, this could be a component that has all of these different variants with different images. And then we will be able to switch between those variants um, as we scroll down on the page with scroll variants effect. So let's create that. So first of all, here we have all of the images. As you can see, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each of them are placed right above each other. And what I can do right now is I can just wrap them in a frame. I'm not going to wrap them in a stack here because if I wrap them in a stack, then every one of those images are going to be placed right below each other, as you can see right here. And this is not what I want. I want to keep them right above each other. So let's just wrap them in a frame. So instead of the option command and enter shortcut, we're going to use the command and enter shortcut here. So as you can see, now these are still on top of each other. And so I can rename this frame to images. And then I can remove the fill color. I can change the radius to match the images radius to 23. What we have to check is that uh, these inner images have to have these pins. So these pins need to be set to zero on all sides and all of these need to be activated, so they need to be blue, because if they are set like this, they will always try to keep this zero pixel distance from the top, right, left, and bottom side of its parent frame, which is this images frame, which basically means that if I start adjusting this parent frame, all of the children, so these images are adapting to it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a component. So option command and K and hit create. So now here we have the variant one. I can just rename this to simply one. The first variant will be a variant where all of these images are hidden and we will just have this placeholder gray um, image. So I'll just change the visibility property for on all of these images to no. And then I'm going to give a background color for this variant one. 
fill color and then it's gonna be this four and then basically that's it that's all i have to set right here and so now what i can do is i can add variant two here i can rename this to simply two remove the fill color and i can show the first image which is this second so visible yes and then i can do this for the rest of the variants i add the new variant i hide the image that is currently shown and then show the next image so basically i'm going to do this for all of these variants so now we have all the seven variants the first one is a placeholder gray and then the others are these different images so now what i can do is i can come back here to the canvas and i can place this images component within this illustration column that we have created here so i place it in I can make sure that this is 500 by 500 and then this log is uh, logged right here because that's how we can log the aspect ratio and then I will make sure that the width is set to fill. So now it looks really nice. We don't have any of the sticky effects that we want to have but we're going to get to it right now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the illustration column does not have a height set to fixed but it has a fill height, so it fills up the available space within its parent, which is the section one. So now if I change this to uh, distribute start, this image will be at the top. And what I will show you now is how we can set a sticky positioning on this image. I can just select the image component, go to the positioning type, set sticky, and you could say that, yeah, that's it, that's how you set sticky, but as you can see, nothing really changes. And that's because in order to make sure that sticky positioning actually works on the frame that you're adding it to, you have to make sure that the parent frames of this component that is set to sticky are set to overflow visible. So let's go through all the parent frames, illustration column, section one, main and desktop. These are the parent frames. And again, these need to be set to overflow visible. So this simple change will basically make sure that the sticky positioning works. As you can see, I start scrolling down and the image component sticks to the top of the viewport. If I change the stop value here to around 300, let's say, you can see that now it is roughly at the center of the viewport. However, you could, you know, start noticing that here we have a little issue because we are having a 300 pixel fixed height or not height, but distance from the top of the viewport right here, which basically means that if the viewport height changes, so I look at this on a smaller device like this, it is no longer centered. The image is now right here on the bottom and then if I have something bigger then it will be at the top so it's not actually centered how can we solve this little problem well we're gonna do something really really smart we're not gonna add the sticky positioning to the image right here but to a wrapping frame that we're gonna create right now so I'm gonna set the type back to relative here on the image and then I'm going to do a option, command and enter. So I'm wrapping this in a frame. This will be called um, wrapper. This will be just a frame that wraps the images. And then the height of this will be really important. It will be set to 100 VH. Well, this 100 VH basically means that it will always take up 100% of the given viewport. So if we're viewing it, on a smaller device, it will be smaller. And if we are viewing it on a bigger device, it will be bigger. So it always, you know, adapts to that size. And since it is a stack and has these settings, direction horizontal, uh, distribute center, align center, it basically means that all the elements within, which is basically just this image component, is going to always stay in the center of this frame. So now, again, we have a frame, it takes up 100% of the given viewport, 
and has an element that always stays centered within. So now if you think about it, if we change the wrapper's positioning to sticky, it will basically do what we need because it will make sure that this frame here, the wrapper sticks to the top of the viewport and keeps the image centered. Now we have a little problem. We changed it to sticky and the height changed to 53 VH from 100. This is a little bug in framer that always happen. Uh, so we just have to change it back to 100. But if we do that and take a look at this, you'll see that the image is now perfectly centered. So even if I change the viewport, it always stays centered because it is wrapped in a frame that always takes up 100% of the given viewport. So now what we can do is we can start basically messing around with this layout because now we have all of the elements that we need, but we just have to make sure that it looks something like this and not like, 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 like this, because this doesn't really, you know, look identical. So let's fix these things. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these two columns have a little bit padding on the left and on the right, just to make sure that we have some breathing room on the left and on the right. So these, this image does not go to the edge on the right. And then the texts are not going to the right, uh, sorry, to the left, to the edge, because you know, that does not really look great. So text column and illustration column are both selected. We're going to go here to the padding and I'm going to just apply the right 24 and the left 24. So now if we take a look at this, you'll see that now we have that little gap uh, from the sides, which is really, really nice. What I notice here is that <laughs> these texts are like moving outside of the actual tablet breakpoint, which is basically because this section right here is set to distribute center and also the alignment is in the center. We can fix this by setting the alignment to the top. So as you can see now, they will be aligned to the top of this section. So that was just a quick fix here. And now what I will solve is basically this thing here that as you can see it's it just it's just too wide right here on our label version so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to go to the right column so the illustration column and i'm going to change its width from this fixed number to a fill uh, relative option so now we basically have the text column and the illustration column both having fill width and so they are both trying to fill out the available space. So they will each get half of the available space, basically. So let's take a look at this now. Well, uh, not so much better, but we can face this with a simple uh, property. As you can see, what we have here is a max width that is set on this section because it is not really growing bigger than this around 1,200 pixel size. So if you select the section here and we set a max width and set it to 1,200 pixels, then it will not grow bigger than that. It will still have width fill, so it will still adapt to different changes in the viewport uh, width, but it will not grow bigger than 1,200 pixels. So this is what we're gonna have. As you can see, if it's smaller than 1,200 pixels, it's gonna adapt. But once we exceed that number, that max width, it's just gonna stay on the max width specified. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this text here starts a little bit um, from you know from the bottom. So we just we just need to push it down a little bit, as you can see right here. So I'm just gonna apply some top padding here on the text column. So I'm just going to increase it. Maybe we can have something like 400. Let's take a look at this. Yes, it looks exactly how it should look. And then now, as you can see, this text column is actually bigger than this section. And the section is not really adapting to it. You can see that it has fixed height, so it is not adapting to anything. So we have to set it to fit content. So it fits the content within and then we should set the main to fit content as well. So now we have this. And then what I want to make sure now is that we can scroll further 
once we reach the end of this section. So as you can see, we have some space at the bottom. So I can just create another section here, paste it within the main here and then call this section two. This will be a transparent section with fill width and maybe 60 VH. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so now, uh, as you can see, for some reason, this illustration frame starts moving away way faster than we need it to. So we want to keep it in view for a little longer, right? Well, let's take a look at what happens. Basically, this illustration column, you can see that it is, it is a little bit shorter than the actual section. And basically, that's why it starts scrolling away a little bit faster. Because how sticky positioning works is that we have this wrapper here, we apply sticky on that, and it will stay sticky until it reaches the end of its parent frame, which is the illustration column. And we have to make sure that it fills up the available space here, so it is the same height as, you know, the full section here. So this wrapper here will stay on the top of the viewport until it reaches right here. So now it will be much better, but still I feel like that it should be, you know, sticky for a little longer, just to make sure that these text layers can catch up as well and go right next to the image. So I'm going to just add a spacer right here within this text column. So this will be just an empty frame, uh, fully transparent and viewport height set on. 30 we age and what we can also do is maybe we can add a little bit bottom padding on the section one maybe 100 and now what you'll notice is that we have the layout perfectly it it looks exactly how it is right here on this demo so now basically all we have to do is to add the effects to these elements to these components so the images are changing and the text layers are also changing the variants. So now let's do that. So first of all, what, I'm, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the ones each of these text layers come into the center of the view, they change their variant to the on variant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add an effect to this first text component. It will be scroll variant, and then the trigger will be section in view, and then the viewport will be the center of the viewport. And then section is, you know, not selected because we don't have a scroll section just yet. So let's create scroll sections. So basically we add a scroll section to each of these text layers because that will allow us to use them as triggers. So I'll select the first text layer and then go add a scroll section in the right panel and name it to. The reason why I'm setting scroll section name to on the first text layer is because when we reach this, we're gonna change the variant of the images to variant two. So that's why the scroll section name here matches the component that we're gonna set it to. So scroll section two, the next will be scroll section three. And I'm going to just go through these text layers and add these scroll section numbers to each of them. So now what I can do is I can go back to the scroll variant effect on the first text layer. And what I can do is I can basically change the variant of this when we reach the second section, which is right here, this element and then set the variant to on. So what happens now is as this element here reaches the center of the viewport, it changes to the on variant. But as you can see, if we start scrolling further down, it does not change back to the gray variant. So we have to add another section here. So we're gonna go back to the scroll variant effect, add section, and when it reaches section three, it needs to switch back to off. So let's take a look at this. When we reach section three, it switches back to off. And so the next text layer will also have an effect, scroll variant, section in view, middle of the viewport. So when section three is in view, we'll switch to on. 
and then when section 4 is in view, we'll switch to off. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, it works perfectly. So you have to go through each of these text layers and, and then add the proper effects to each of them. So now as you can see, each of these effects are added and the scroll variant is working perfectly. So as we scroll through these, uh, when each of the text layers come into the center of the viewport, they switch to the on variant and once they leave that position, they switch back to the off. So what I have to do now is I have to also add this scroll variant effect to this images component as well. So effects, scroll variant, and then the same section in view trigger, same middle of the viewport. And then when we reach section two, we switch to the second variant. When we reach section three, we switch to the third variant and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, it works perfectly. It works exactly how it should. And yeah, basically all we have to do now is we have to make sure that it, it is responsive because it might look great on tablet, but the phone variant is just, it's not really, it's not really working. So the question here is that how can we optimize something like this for mobile? Well, I basically take the inspiration from the Amy website because this effect is actually created from the old Amy website. And what they did is they basically grabbed the image on mobile and they just used it as a fixed positioning uh, element over each of the text layers. So I'm going to just show you how it's done. So first of all, what I do is I copy this wrapper here and then paste it in within the phone variant or the phone breakpoint. So I'll just paste it in here. I'll just make sure to put it about the nav and then I'll change it to fixed positioning. I'll pin it to all sides. So now we have the wrapper frame. It takes up the full uh, inner screen on the phone. And then this within the images, it can be absolutely positioned, maybe 16 pixels from the bottom, 16 pixels from the right. And then maybe the width can be relative, um, I don't know, 70% maybe. And so now this is great. What we can do is we can then completely just get rid of the illustration column here on mobile, visible, no. And basically that's it. Maybe we can change the gap between these texts here a little bit and uh, just have a little bit smaller. And then uh, as you can see, it works perfectly. Uh, this is how, you know, this could be optimized on mobile. Uh, however, as you can see, when we start at, like entering this feature section, we have this gray frame here. And this is something that I don't really like. I want to completely hide this element when it is not in the um, in the view or we have not entered the feature section. So we're going to create an additional variant here where all of them are disabled and also it does not have a fill color. So it's basically not visible. So this will be called off. So then what I can do is I can change this to off so it will start from off and then what I can do is I can also make sure that once we end this feature section so we reach the end of this we also hide it so we can add a scroll section to section 2 scroll section this will be called off and we will use that to change the variant to off so when it reaches the off section we change to off so let's take a look at how this works as you can see it works perfectly as we reach the end of the section it disappears uh, maybe the only issue that we have here is that um, this section 2 comes a little bit later and we wait a bit too much uh, before actually hiding 
So what we can do is we can maybe add the off to this spacer frame that we created here. By the way, we should have renamed it to spacer. So let's remove the off from here, add it to that off, and then let's also add it back here, section off. And let's take a look at this phone breakpoint again. As we reach the end of the section, it uh, basically hides that little image frame. One little tip at the end of the video for you, uh, when you use this optimization method where you basically put the wrapper above everything on your site, you have to make sure that set the pointer events of that frame to none because now I literally cannot interact with the elements that are below it. So I can, I can basically not interact with the website. <laughs> so as you can see, I cannot select the text here and on the desktop, I can definitely select it. So the way I can solve that is I can just go to wrapper style and pointer events set to none. And now I will see that even though that this wrapper is above everything, it is set to over, uh, pointer events none. So we can still interact with the site. So as you can see, this is the final result a pretty great looking Leo feature section. And by the way, I just wanted to show this to you as well. If you want to flip these columns, you can just use the arrow keys on your keyboard uh, because we have used um, stacks. So that's why they're really cool. We can, you know, just adjust the properties or just adjust the ordering of the elements within our stacks. And we can have these different layouts. So, you know, it is really it is really worth learning stacks and learning how to use them so yeah i really do hope that it was helpful this little video i hope that you learned something about framer and how we work in framer to create these cool little sections and yeah again the remix link will be in the description i'm going to also have a link for framer.university it is a secret resource with a bunch of gems you're going to find remixes tutorials uh, I don't know, free stuff that will basically help you learn Framer. So make sure to check that out as well. So make sure to leave your questions in the comments. I'm always trying to reply to all of you guys. And yeah, like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.